Great to see you here again. We are back in chapter two of the course of discrete mathematics. Basic structures where we look at sets, functions, sequences, sums and matrices. And in this paragraph, we are looking into the introduction to cardinality of sets and countable sets. It will be a very short uh, paragraph. We only have two videos here and both videos are rather short. But it doesn't matter, it's still important, so pay attention, you will need this later on. We look at cardinality of sets. We looked at the cardinality of a finite set, which we defined as the number of elements in that specific set. Now, cardinality of sets can be used to identify sets which have the same cardinality and compare cardinality of sets in general by looking at the number of each element in each set. In the following videos, we will be looking into the countability also of infinite sets, like the set of the positive integers and the set of the rational numbers. We can also prove that the set of the real numbers is uncountable and define uncountable sets in computer science to be sets of which no program can be written to find all its values. We look at the definitions related to cardinality and countability of sets. First, look at some definitions related to cardinality, and we can say that two sets, A and B, have the same cardinality if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence from A to B. And we can write it as the cardinality of A is equal to the cardinality of B. And we use the same notation that we used for the absolute value when we were looking at mathematics. So the two vertical bars of a set mean the cardinality of a set. We can compare the cardinality of two sets when we have a one-to-one -one function between the two sets A and B. The cardinality of a set A is less or the same as the cardinality of B. Then we can write that the cardinality of A is smaller than or equal to B. We can also say that when A, cardinality of A is smaller than or equal than B, and the cardinality of A and B are different, at that moment we can say that the cardinality of A is less than the cardinality of B. And then we write that the cardinality of A is smaller than the cardinality of B. We have the term countable sets. When we look at countable sets, we have to look at infinite sets, for example, in, and we have to split infinite sets into two groups. We have to look at sets with the same cardinality as the set of the natural numbers and the sets with a different cardinality. So we are looking here at infinite sets, which means that they have an infinite number of members. We can define that the set is countable when it's either finite or it has the same cardinality as the set of the natural numbers, then we call the set countable. A set is not countable, and then we call it an uncountable set when it doesn't comply with this condition. We also can look at an infinite subset or an infinite set, S, that is countable, which has cardinality Aleph 0, and we write that the cardinality of S, of that infinite set, is Aleph 0. Now, we can show that a set of the even integers, for example, that it's a countable set. An even number is given by the function f of n is 2n, which is the definition 
of integers. It goes from z plus to the z to the even positive integers. And this is, in fact, a countable set because there is a one-to-one -one and onto function between those two. So there is a one-to-one -one and onto function from the positive integers to the set of the positive the even positive integers and the set of the even positive integers is given by the relation of 2n where n is a positive integer from the domain. Now there is ox which has been defined and it's the paradox what we call Hilbert's Grand Hotel. Now it has been developed by the mathematician David Hilbert and he introduced a thought experiment which illustrates a counterintuitive property of infinite sets. And he introduced the idea in 1924 during a lecture which he called Über das Unendliche, about the infinite. And in fact, the Grand Hotel, which he calls, has a countable number of rooms, an infinite number of rooms. And each room is occupied by a guest. Now, when you consider a hotel which has a finite number of rooms, when all those rooms are occupied, we can only accommodate a new guest when another guest is evicted from a room or leaves the hotel. Now, what we can do is can we accommodate a new guest in the fully occupied Grand Hotel without removing a guest? What is, is this possible? Now, we have an infinite number of rooms. We have n rooms which are occupied. And the fact that the rooms are countable, we can move the guests to the next room. So n means that guest n goes to room n plus 1, and so on. And by moving all the guests to the next room, we free room 1 for the new guest. So basically here, due to the fact that we have an countable infinite number of rooms, we can, in fact, we have that one-to-one -one function and onto function between the two elements. We can just move the guests and we can accommodate more of them. The paradox that Hilbert here created is that we can still add new guests when we have infinite rooms. The condition that all the rooms are full and that no new guests can be accepted does not stand anymore. So the fact that we have the countable infinite number of sets means that we can keep on adding guests to the hotel without the need of guests who are staying there to leave a room. So this was the presentation about cardinality, about countable sets, and we are going to look in the second video, in the last video of this paragraph, how we can find an uncountable set. We will be looking at first video the proof of the second that chapter set of the real numbers. I will see you in the next basically video. Uncountable. Thank you. And You're doing a bye great bye. job. We're coming slowly to the end of the second chapter and keep on doing the work, keep on looking at the videos and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye. A proof that 